Man, Jason, I appreciate you coming yeah. here. Man, we got to start off, though, right? You, you know, you're old guy. Man, tell me a little bit about this guy right here. Oh, my god! And this picture, man. Uh, it's a guy who had a lot of stingers, as you can see from the neck roll. <laughs> the uh, red neck roll yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, just, you move, that's how you're moving around. Um, no, that was, those are fun times. Cincinnati, fortunate to have a lot of good teams. Played for three different head coaches in college. Uh, Mark D'Antonio, Brian Kelly, and then Bush Jones at the end. Um, and we had a lot of success. It was like we had three different head coaches, and it was all for good reasons. Like, they went on to better jobs. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, play with a lot of guys, end up playing in the league. A bunch of guys end up playing with the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, it was a good run, for sure. Oh, that's awesome, man. I, I yeah. got to start the sore spot in my heart, but I'm here now. I'm a media guy. So, yeah. uh, I finally watched your great parade speech. Uh, awesome speech, and I, was, I watched it at the right time because if I would have watched it back then, you I would have yeah, so been angry. So I had to bring up Super Bowl 52, sure. beat the Patriots. Yeah. How awesome was that, just winning that game, getting the first Super Bowl for Philadelphia? It was incredible. And, um, you know, I, that speech, I think, you know, there was a lot of things that transpired throughout my career, but I think a lot of those sentiments had been ingrained throughout my career with the city, with the organization. And then with that team, that uh -huh. team, yeah, if, you, if you could draw up, like, the prototypical, like, Philadelphia, like, fan and, like, and like what Philadelphia represents, I think that team uh, really represented the city and, you know, that underdog mentality that um, really swept uh, the team throughout the playoffs. And, um, you know, I think it, it was, like, a kind of a storybook year for us, for sure. Yeah, man, not for me, but... Uh, I understand. I, yeah. I was on the other side of that this past year and, and realized my brother said something before last season, um, and he said, you know, losing a Super Bowl never make you want to win one that much more. And, man, I, I thought he was just saying something good for the crowd, but that's real. Yeah, losing is... is it, it's always like that. The, uh -huh. the lows, the highs are really good, but that, man, it stings when you the don't get The lows stay with you. Yeah. Well. I'm here to bring that good energy because after you beat us that, that next year, it worked out we went on and won one. So <laughs> yeah. you might have a chance to go back and, and win one this year. I like that. I like that idea. Man, you know, obviously being a Super Bowl champion, how has that challenged you and, and challenged your leadership now of trying to help this team have high expectations? How do you kind of balance that? I think you're just trying to remind people um, that you got to come up here, work, and just be where you're at today like you can't worry about that yet you know the Super Bowl is obviously you know that's that's the ultimate goal uh, but we got to win each and every day we got to win practice we got to go out there and work on our technique everybody's just trying to improve at this point and you try and guide all that energy into uh, being productive and in, in, in being where you want to be at the end of the when it's all said and done and I think you know when when I was younger there were a lot of guys that had been there or had been to Super Bowls, who had played for a long time, and that's kind of how they directed the energy, right? Uh -huh. And now being one of the older guys, it's kind of your job to to steer the energy, to get people and be, hey, you know, hey, let, let's just work on this right now. Uh -huh. Let's, you know, let's let's improve this area. Let's improve, uh, you know, our hand usage. Let's improve, uh, you know, how we're passing off these games. Like all of these little things will make the big difference down the road. I got a, I got one of these. I'll fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. The Philadelphia Eagles offense is at its best when? I think this is any offense mm -hmm. when the quarterback is playing well, but when Jalen Hurts is, um, you know, when, when he is dialed in and, uh, you know, just able to be himself, uh, you know, I don't think that there's a defense in the league that can that can stop that. And, you know, he's just such a dynamic player um, that, you know, when he's on and he's in the zone, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to be a part of. What has been the best compliment you've ever given Jalen Hurst? I don't know. In, in his eyes or my eyes? Or both. <laughs> in his eyes and in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think to me... Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about him, I don't know, and I've definitely said this to him, but it's not, it hasn't just been like one cop. I just think Jalen, his temperament in the huddle and the way he carries himself is is so good. And 
it's good for everybody else. You know, he doesn't let the highs get too high. He doesn't let the lows get too low. He's right here, but he's an ultimate competitor who wants to win. Uh -huh. And like, he's a he's he's like a calm, but also confident killer at the same time. And I think when you look at like the greats in like all sports, they, they kind of have that. I don't, I'm not blessed with that. My emotions go like this. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> And it's good for me when he's like that. Mm -hmm. Like it, it helps me so Calms much. You down. Yeah, like all right, hey, you know that's that's a really important I think for 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 the head guy. You still got to fire guys up at times, mm -hmm. but for you know when you get set the huddle and you're saying the play, just the way you communicate the play can make a difference yep. in how guys hear it and the confidence that they go out there mm -hmm. and do it with. And that's something that he's been great with since the moment he's been here. Well, as far as what he thinks, the best probably like. You know, I was walking by his locker room, uh, his locker the other day, and he's playing some old school music. I was like, "Hey, man, I like what you're playing. Like, can I get that playlist?" So that's probably <laughs> he likes stuff like that. You know, he's I think he's uh, he appreciates uh, you know uh, the 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 more like friendship type uh -huh. stuff. I bet, but yeah. And that's what happens when you get older. Like you tell the younger players you like their music. They're like, oh man, the old G, the old yeah. head likes my music. That's a good thing. Well, Jalen likes the old stuff. He's not too, he's not playing a lot of the new. Those stuff. are the players I used to love. My last year, like, oh man, y'all yeah. playing like that's good music, not yeah. this new stuff. So for sure. And I think one thing that helps him is having the whole offensive line, that unit. What yeah. is the key to the unit and having the offensive line play as well as you guys have played? Um, well, we've been fortunate to be healthy for the most part. You know, we've had guys go down here and there. Um, and then when we do have guys go down, for the most part, they've done well. Stout's mm -hmm. very good at coaching. Part of it, I think his strength is the fact that he was in college. And in college, you have to develop players. Mm -hmm. You're not fortunate enough to just go sign a big name for I guess now you can. Yeah. The landscape's but changed. But you don't have guys that stay for 14 years exactly. that you can rely on. In, in, in two, three years, we're going to need another guy mm -hmm. right here in this position. So um, I think, uh, and then we have one of the best coaches. You know, we, have, we have great players. The organization invests and high quality offensive linemen uh, with high upside. And then Jeff Stoutland's a great teacher, a great schemer, and a great motivator. I mean, you can't go into that meeting room not ready to go. Yeah. He's gonna expose you quick. He has that standard. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it's in, you know, he's gonna ask random questions out of the blue just to see if guys are paying. And he has like this sixth sense. Like, he can tell if a guy's not paying attention. Isn't that right, Landon? And Landon's <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I mean, he'll catch you. So you, you can't go in there not ready to go, not ready to pay attention and, and know what's going on. Um, on the practice field, like, I don't know how he still has the same amount of energy he does, um, but, you know, you're going to be working and you're going to be getting better. Um, yeah, he's just relentless. He's, he, he loves what he does. He's, he loves teaching. He loves coaching. He's passionate about uh -huh. it. And, you know, it, it never stops, and I think that that pushes all of us. Oh, that's awesome. You talked about being in the huddle and, and a play comes in. Yeah. What is the mindset of you and the offensive lineman? You get a run play called in that you know is locked. We're not mm -hmm. adjusting. We're not changing. You yeah. come out. You see they're in a run defense, mm -hmm. but it's like we're running the ball. Yeah. You're here to stop the run, and I get to go attack the guy across from me. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things with, you know, especially those plays where you know, typically – they're good, good. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some defense that might be better, but for the most part, this thing should work against anything. And uh, you know, whenever you get one of those called in, you know, you're excited to to hit the blocks. You're excited to hit the make blocks. You go through, all right, what defense are they giving us? What's the best way to for me to communicate and start the the, the point at? Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, you know, I think you're you're just trying to hit everything aggressively and make sure it goes well. So that they keep calling it. I think that's a big thing. Like, <laughs> hey, if we, if we want them to run the ball, we got to show them we can run this. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know, it's it's one of those things. As you continually do it, you know, it wears on the defense. It wears on the guys out there, and it, you start getting in a rhythm. And um, you know, when you're in that rhythm, there's nothing better. All right, we're gonna jump into the brotherly love. Like, talk mm -hmm. about the brothers first. I gotta ask you, who's the better brother, you or Travis? Who's the better brother? Yep. Anything, and what? Anything. Like, overall, if somebody said, I'm picking Jason or Travis. Travis. Travis? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, you yeah. shouldn't admit that. No, I, I got to, man. <laughs> uh, the, you know, Trav is so good. He's obviously the better football player. I, I don't <laughs> think we need to argue that. But he's, you know, Trav is a special person, man. His, his personality, uh, you know, what the way he carries himself, 
Um, he's fun to be around. He's smart. Um, you know, he, 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 you, you, you haven't met a, ba- a day where like people don't like hanging out with Trav. He never has a bad day. Yeah, kind of he's kind of guy. And, and um, you know, he's just a, a good intentioned human being. Um, and, you know, I, I wish in a lot of ways I was more similar to Trav. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You <laughs> brought in a fan when your wife was having a baby after she told you. <laughs> not to, that is a brave move. You pulled it off. Yeah. She recorded you. You're eating good breakfast sandwiches. You're sleeping. Yeah. Like, only great people can pull off eating food in front of their wife <laughs> when they're having a baby. So give yourself a little bit more credit than that, man. But I, I do want to ask, can you just talk about the idea of being on another team but being a huge supporter of your brother, like the AFC Championship game, you have on a Chief sweatshirt to support him. Just talk about what that means to be competitive but root him on. Yeah, I mean, you know, the NFL is the only level that Travis and I haven't played for the same team. And, um, you know, Trav isn't the only one I know. The Chiefs organization, uh, Andy Reid drafted me yeah. here in Philadelphia. I know a lot of people over there. Um, and... I mean, you know this. When your brother's playing for another team, it's easy to root for him. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I didn't know how it was going to go for the Super Bowl. That was certainly a weird experience being <laughs> on opposite sidelines. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, you always want your brother to have success. And in some ways, you know, you, you hope for that more than your own because it's, like, less in your own control. It's, yeah. it's it, You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. you know, for your own success, you feel like you kind of, you know, whether it's true or not, you kind of control that a little mm-hmm. bit more. And then with your brother, it's more like, I really, you really want it to happen, but that's about all you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You no, know, I remember like the Super Bowl I played with my brother. I'm hoping he has a better game than me. I'm sure. like, I just, yeah. you know, it was his <laughs> first on, time ever playing there. <laughs> so I, I definitely, now, does your wife let your little girls wear Uncle Travis' jersey? At all, because she says she would never put on another Chiefs yeah, jersey. Yeah, and I don't like that. You can wear a Chiefs <laughs> jersey, Kai. You know, you ain't got to be that serious. But maybe this year when we're playing them, you can wear. Don't wear. Don't but, put that jersey. Yeah, on. Yeah, but you know, um, yeah, the girls do have some Chiefs gear for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah, they they've worn some some Chiefs stuff. Uh, they're definitely Eagles fans, but, but we can be Chiefs fans sometimes. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> our house our house is like that too. Yeah, we had a bye week. Go root on Uncle Jay. I'm all for it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the podcast. How has the podcast helped you as a player, not just the media side, but also as a player? Yeah, I, you know, and that was a, an interesting um, outcome that I wasn't ready for. I think when you're when you're doing the podcast, you're a lot more aware. Or when I, we're doing our podcast, I'm a lot more aware of what's happening across Everything, the league. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it's so easy in the NFL – to get in your rhythm and your weekly schedule and to really only focus on yourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and that's good. You just don't want to lose track of that. But um, I think you definitely notice things that are happening across the league a lot more. You notice what other teams are doing more because you're watching uh, and you want to make sure that you're prepared to talk about certain things on the show. Um, and then I think just talking to Travis, like we, we talk a lot more ball now, than we've yeah. ever talked. You know, we used to be more just catching up, how you doing? Mm-hmm. We talk a little bit of ball, but now it's more like, you know, we're, we're passing ideas across sometimes. So I think I think you just end up focusing more on the game, and whenever you're focusing more on the game, you're, 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 you're taking something in. So, yeah. Who would be your dream guest on the New Heights podcast? Oh, man. Other than me and j Mac. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, you know, um, for a while I said, my dad, Ed Kelsey, we got him, so he's off the books. Um, you know, uh, hmm. I got a whole list, and I'm trying to think of who is who is number who's the one. Main person. That's hard. Um, you know, uh, I would probably. Ah, I don't know. Do I go athlete, entertainer? Um, My favorite uh, athlete growing up, oh, see, I can't even say that. You got like Jerome Bettis, Mike Allstott, Ray Lewis. Um, it's going to be on NBC, I, so whoever you say, I know, they com- yeah, they're coming. I, I, I gotta, okay, they're they, coming. They, it is NBC. All right, there we go. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I got, uh, you know, I really liked, um, uh, I think it's interesting always to talk to, 
Uh, oh man, I know. I'm, I'm, this ain't helping. <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep it easy. I'm gonna. Uh, I can't say Taylor Swift. Come on, that's <laughs> too obvious. Travis will kill me. Uh, I'll go. Um, I'll go with my Aunt Judy. We got to get Aunt Judy on the Aunt podcast. Judy, yeah, Aunt I'm gonna Judy. keep it. I'm gonna keep it easy. Aunt Judy, you're gonna be watching this, and now you gotta come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the tush push or the brotherly shove has become this big thing. Yeah, you're at the bottom of that every time you call it. Yeah. What's the suckiest part of being at the bottom of the tush push? Man, all the weight and everything <laughs> lying up on top of you, and you got to wait for everybody else to get up before you can get up. It's it is a grueling play for sure, and um, you know if you do it right, you're at the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, if you're if you're not at the bottom, it usually didn't go well. So you know when you're at the bottom and everybody's on top of you, and you know you're all crunched up and you're waiting for people to get up, and then hopefully somebody's left to help you up yeah. after that whole ordeal. But um, you know. It's, uh, you know, as long as you got the first down, you're usually pretty happy. You're happy about that. Yeah. First down, a touchdown, it's a good call. Exactly, yeah. Man, I got to ask you, like I said, I watched his speech. Yeah. You said a hungrier dog, a hungry dog runs, runs faster. faster. Yeah. How hungry is this dog sitting across from me still? <laughs> well, he's not malnourished. We, we can't be too, <laughs> we got to have some energy. But, um, yeah, that's been one of Stout's uh, sayings since I've known him. Mm-hmm. And he got it from you know another player that played in the league. I can't remember the, uh, the guy's name, but um, Stout. Um, uh, I guess I agree. Was very hungry. I think, mm-hmm. especially coming off of everything that happened last year, to go the distance that we went and not get it done. Um, you know that uh, that um, will make you hungry. I think than maybe you've ever been. Um, it, it, it reinvigorates. Um, I think a lot of juices and a lot of uh, energy, um, and you know I think I think it's not just me. I think that's probably the whole team. Well, Philadelphia, you heard it here first. Jason Kelsey got another five <laughs> years. You don't need any more centers coming in here. Well. He's gonna be here for a long time, man. I appreciate you sitting down. I know you got other things you want to do, getting ready right. for this game. And as you get close to you know ending your career, moving on to something you know new. Yeah. What do you enjoy most? What are you cherishing with these last couple of years? Um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to take in most, I think, what all the uh, guys who are, I've talked to that are done now say they miss the most, mm-hmm. which is the locker room and being around the guys. You know, mm-hmm. I think, you know, from everybody I've talked to, that's kind of, you know, what they wish they still had. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you just try and make sure you're, you're developing relationships, you're, you're, you're talking to guys. You're enjoying the cafeteria. You're, 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 um, you know, going out there and enjoying the moment you have on the field left because you don't know how many more you're going to get. And the reality is, I guess at, at any point in your career, it could be your last step out yeah. there. But I think the closer you get towards that being knownly uh, over, I think you 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 cherish and appreciate each one of those moments. Uh-huh. The urgency is certainly high. Yeah, and I, I have one more. All right. So you own cows, you got your own farm. Yeah, yeah. How does Jason Kelsey, the center, the farm owner, deal with the new popularity, the fame, and everything that you have going on now? Oh, man. I'm trying not to deal with it any differently, to be <laughs> honest. I'm trying to be the same person I've always been. Um, you know, Trav's got a whole nother issue. Yeah, that's He's a got different a whole level. level, right? <laughs> uh, for me, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a little bit higher uh, but I, I still try to be the same. I've always been open, uh, authentic, um, honest, and I think you know whatever you're doing in life, if you're doing that, you're going to be pretty happy. That's good. All right, we got two great Philadelphia plays: Brotherly Shove, Philadelphia Special. Oh man, which one? Which one are you going with? <sighs> man. Um, I got to go Philly special. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, until we win, if we would have won the Super Bowl last year on the Burley Shove, that might be a different story. But, um, and there's, it, you know, we do the Burley Shove every single yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Like Philly we only special, ran that yeah. once. And the way that whole thing happened with Nick asking for it and Doug having the cojones to call it on fourth mm-hmm. down, like it's like, all right. I, you know, I didn't, it, it's turned into this. It, it was, 
just uh, it was it was a magical moment, I think, and um, I'd be hard pressed to say anything other than that. Yeah. I don't know if there was another play that brought one fan base yeah, how so do much you, sadness. How do you remember that play? Line, lined up, fourth down, we go all out blitz. Yeah. So now we're out there. Next thing I know, there's a motion. There's, and so now I just scramble, move back inside, and I see the ball's in the air to Nick Foles, and I'm like, yeah. and then we run a play on offense. Same thing, pretty much. And Tom drops the I know, ball. I know. Everybody brought that up. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it crushed me, but very, <laughs> very happy play for all, all of Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how it goes sometimes, yeah. man. Yeah. No, appreciate this, man. That's all right, awesome. yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah. Appreciate you. Likewise, man. <laughs> hey, good luck Sunday. All right, thank you, yeah. thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.